this Windows utility is something I've been working on for the past three years, and we just went through a major update. Uh, a lot of people have contributed, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that's gone over to cttstore.com and grabbed the Windows toolbox that helps support uh, this continued development of the project. But with that, let's just tackle what it is. Basically, this is night night on steroids when you first get to the install page you can install all these applications and there's been a couple really cool feature additions with this update obviously you can just select whatever it is but let's say you want to repeat these selections on let's just another machine and you're like hey i like all these selections you can export this file just name it whatever you want down here you put def or whatever clear the selections and then you can import those selections on a new machine if you had that file. It makes it really easy for selecting all of your programs over and over or possibly doing VMs, whatever it is that you're doing it for. Another thing is get installed. You can click that. It queries everything in the background and then it tells you everything that's installed that you can update through Winget. So all these programs are everything I have installed on my system. Pretty cool, right? So that's a neat a uh, way to get that and you can even un uninstall directly from here too now which is nice and then we have an upgrade all function and then install has always been there as far as the tweaks go there's been some changes over here a couple more more bug fixes than anything uh just recently on a live stream over on twitch we did the performance profile so this when we click add let's say you click add a whole bunch and really just kind of bloat up your old school power profile in here. You can see ultimate performance is down here. And a lot of people are like, hey, uh, I want to get rid of ultimate performance. Or let's say you go to high performance. How do you get rid of it? You click remove. And then when you come back to here, you'll see it's still there. Let's just reload it. And now it's gone. Uh, it makes it really easy to add these things. I honestly like ultimate performance. So... We're going to come back and select it. I highly recommend it. If you're on a desktop PC, don't do that on a laptop, though. Your battery will drain faster than you can find a power outlet. So don't do that. Uh, as far as everything else in here, services has been a big thing I've been harping on and working on developing. Getting these to where you can click this and undo tweaks and get it reverted back to the exact state uh, on startup. Uh, earlier in the week, we had some bad commits on that. That was my bad. And if you run this tool and you had some issues earlier in the week, just know if you run it now, everything's fine. Uh, just some quick things there. Uh, big updates for this one is is Edge. We've been working on uh, Pat over on uh, GitHub has been doing a lot of those commits. I'll show a lot of the commits coming up here just shortly but uh, another big quality of life is people are running this tool a lot or let's say you just want it on a desktop or have a shortcut you now have create the shortcut and you can just toss it on your desktop or your documents or wherever you want you can even put it in your start menu if you want uh, and what that does is you can just click it and it will actually run uh, the command through powershell for you which makes it a little bit easier to run multiple times as some people don't like pulling up PowerShell with admin. As far as the config, not too much has changed here. Uh, just some basic quality of life. We are adding in a network reset, NetSH int IP resets, probably something you've run if you've been in the IT field for any, any period of time and your network has problems on Windows, we will be adding a network fix button uh, coming up in the next update. That's something that uh, should, it's actually on the test branch right now. Uh, but it hasn't get pushed to live quite yet. And as far as updates go, how I work with updates usually is I'll hit security updates and leave my system alone. That makes sure I don't get like some junk feature or you know some weather search bar and down here on my taskbar out of the blue. It'll only grab security updates. But if you want the default out of box and grab all those new features, you can click it and do that. I, however. Don't like that. I like to stick on security. And then for the people that really just want to disable everything on updates, you can click this button. Don't recommend it, though. And that is this new features as far as just showing kind of some other bug fixes with the toolbox. If you run it in the past, we have fixed a ton of different things. And I kind of listed it all on my website for this update. 
Uh, I'm not going to go over everything here. Probably the biggest one that most people will see here is the hover time. So when you're hovering over something, it's not immediately showing you that tool tip. A lot of people found that annoying. So I reverted it back to stock settings. The other thing is a lot of times you'd miss your notification bar or the calendar, which is basically the notification bar. We made a little undo to easily enable that again through the tweaks page. That was just a, a quick little fix and then just a ton of quality of life here. And as far as commits to the main branch, just in the past week, we've seen a ton of different commits. Uh, some big ones here is mostly typos and other things. So if you like, again, if you did stuff earlier in the week, you might've noticed, man, things are changing a lot. It's mainly the merging of the big test branch. And if you look at like, I think it was commit 726, yeah, we had quite a bit of commits all coming from uh, just a variety of contributors. Two I really wanted to shout out though was Derp. He's done just a uh, developer Derp. He's done just such a great job for improving the speed and just kind of putting run spaces and designing a new format. So we're doing a compilation and it makes just everything so much more modular. Uh, I was a little apprehensive to it at first, but I really do love the new structure of when you till where everything's into the module and then it gets compiled into that one PS1 file people are running. It just makes things easier to track when doing the development. As far as other commits, another shout out to Pad. He's been working really hard on uh, mainly getting edge removal. We're removing the bat way of doing it, which uh, it's a batch file that gets run and it strips it out and it makes it to where it can never come back. Uh, that way is a little bit too aggressive and pad has been working on a new non-intrusive way of just disabling it because a lot of people wanted to do like bing chat and install uh firefox and just just a tidbit about that if you are just wanting bing chat and you're like i need to install edge for it don't do that get a user agent switcher and then just say hey i'm on edge and then just apply to active window and what that does is when you go to like bing chat and you're like hey i need to chat with bing Instead of it denying you, you can say, hey, you're not on Edge. There's a better browser out there. We need Edge to use chat. No, it's just all a, just Microsoft up to its old shenanigans. Just use, use an user agent switcher and say, hey, yeah, I'm on Edge. Totally on Edge. We're not on Edge. We're on Brave. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, just another tidbit. And then, obviously, if you would like to contribute and uh, anything, head over to cttstore.com. Go pull up the Windows Toolbox. This just gives an executable version of running this. No real difference here. You're not getting anything extra special. Uh, maybe in the future, we're going to tie in some other stuff. I am working on some other development I might put in here. Uh, but uh, none of that's finalized right now. It just gives like an offline executable that has basic tweaks. And that one needs to be polished and updated. And then another executable that's just a PowerShell wrapper that just runs all this. Uh, as well, but it just makes things a little easier to run. Um, but at the same time, don't don't feel compelled. I just want to put that in there at the end here and just want to get everybody's feedback. How are you guys liking it? As far as the toolbox, I have really just loved this past couple of weeks, kind of bouncing ideas, closing issues, and just uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. And I've really really enjoyed the live streams and the back and forth I have with the community and also in the comments here on YouTube. It's been great. So thank you guys. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.